Hello folks, I'm South Jersey Sam, and a Merry Christmas to everyone. As you can see, I'm already getting into the Christmas spirit. I got my tree decorated, presents for everyone, and a plate of gingerbread blue team cookies for Santa to have. Now of course, being that time of year, it would be customary for people like me to do a list of Christmas specials, but let's face it, it's been done before, so I'm going to do something different. I'm going back to basics. I'm doing a list of Christmas songs. And why not? There are so many Christmas songs to listen to during this festive time. Whether you listen to them on the radio or hear it from your CD or iPod, there are so many good songs to listen to. But for this list, I've decided to go with a few different songs, some of which are fairly new and somewhat obscure. So not only will you see some classics on the list, but also some that deserve to be mentioned for various reasons. And these 13 songs are certainly worth listening to. Why 13? Because 12 days of Christmas isn't enough. So, grab some hot cocoa or eggnog, have a Christmas cookie, and relax as we look at the top 13 Christmas songs. Think of your fellow man, lend him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. Okay, I might as well get this out of the way. This first song is a little dark, considering that it came from a pretty rough Christmas episode. But the reason it's on the list is because I can find it understandable to a degree. With that said, here's the song. But now instead all we're feeling is dread because Christmas time is killing us. There are a few Christmas songs that are as dark as this one, and for good reasons. But this I find to be intriguing and surprisingly entertaining. We basically see the years of endless work to meet the demands of everyone in the world take a huge toll on both Santa and the elves in a song that sounds like something out of Broadway. The melody, the orchestra, the singing, it's a rather interesting dirge to work with. But the lyrics could use a bit of work. I'll tell you what, shove your list up your butt, no, screw you! Fingers all bleed and look, that guy just peed because Christmas time is killing us! But the reason I like this song is because of the hidden truth behind it. In this episode, everyone in the world seems to rely on Santa to bring gifts to them, as seen in the first song earlier in the episode. But with all the work he and his crew do alone become so staggering, it's hard not to feel sad for them. But I think the most interesting thing about this song, whether it was intentional or not, is how it represents people who work hard during the Christmas season. From people who try to earn money to buy gifts for friends and family, to the workers who try and meet the demands of the busy season, all while trying to enjoy the holiday without losing their minds. They must have it just as bad as the elves in this episode. Regardless, the song is actually interesting to listen to, even if it's somber, but it's at least something to admire. Hell, it was nominated for a Grammy for Best Song Written for Visual Media, but lost to Tangle's I See the Light. But hey, if a song about the misery of working year after year in the North Pole isn't worth a Grammy nomination, then what is? Christmas time is killing us! So, is everyone okay? Okay, calm down. The rest of the songs on this list are better, I guarantee. Much like the last song, this one goes over the negative side of Christmas, but in a satirical and humorous way. And it's from none other than that guy with the glasses himself, the Nostalgia Critic. It 
That's the holiday clusterfuck, holiday clusterfuck. Citizens gather together to run amok. Making a song based on the misery of Christmas is nothing new, but this one is more humorous to listen to, and in a way, agreeable. But I put this low on the list because it discusses Christmas, Halloween, and Thanksgiving all together in the Yuletide insanity we all know about, rather than just Christmas itself. But when you think about it, all three holidays can be just as much of a hassle as one lone holiday. Going, going and gone. Change decorations out on your front lawn. Losing that magical touch. Seeing your in-laws three times is too much. But you know what? He's got a point to this song. We like the focus on the true meaning of Christmas with all the insane shopping sprees, family fiascos, traveling catastrophes, and the insane weather. We never stop to think of all the peaceful times of Christmas, where it was all about spending time with family and friends while enjoying the feeling of giving to others instead of being greedy. Hard to believe that a person who suffered from shit films like Food Fight and Garbage Pail Kids is able to make a song like this to teach us a moral like that in this chaotic season. In fact, I'm surprised that Nostalgia Critic hasn't made another Christmas song over the years. Hell, I wouldn't mind listening to what he likes about the holiday season. Cause it's snowing, I love shopping, and I love the f- 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 Christmas. I love those stuff ocean shows, she'll scare the shit out of me. Cause I'm fucking batshit crazy about Christmas. I made it hot chocolate and my skin is red, and I quote Christmas story till your soul is dead. Cause I'm so and sweet toppings, and I fucking love Christmas. Moving on. There's no doubt that Santa has become the figure of Christmas, shadowing other holidays of the season. It's very rare to find a song where one other holiday figure would stand up against old Saint Nick, but that changed when a certain YouTube channel created a song to put Santa and a prophet in battle. A rap battle, to be exact. Sweet robes, oh man, one too many days in the sun Stop preaching, homie, teach your flock to cover some fun I bring joy every year, man, I represent cheer You represent sandals and a scraggly beard Yes, believe it or not, the people behind epic rap battles of history made a video of Santa and Moses having a rap battle As strange as it is, it's also funny and enjoyable for various reasons From the idea itself to even having Snoop Dogg portray Moses. When I was high upon the mountain, God revealed the truths of the earth, but he never mentioned a fat-ass Papa Smurf. It takes nine reindeers to haul your fat ass. You took the Christ out of Christmas and just added more mass. Just the idea of one of the famous rappers portraying a religious figure that had saved slaves is hilarious. And as much as I respect old Kris Kringle, the lyrics Moses had were stronger than Santa's. He pretty much put Santa in the middle of the Red Sea after that, and the fans who have seen the video have also gave points to Moses. What's interesting about this video is that this is the first rap battle video to use a religious figure. However, it wouldn't be the first time it used a holiday figure, as the Easter Bunny had a rap battle against Genghis Khan. Yeah, there were a lot of strange crossovers in their videos, but this is one of the few that worked out with the scenario, courtesy of a fan. But now the question is... Well, now that we've got the silly and serious songs out of the way, let's get down to the real songs. This time, we're going with the first and only villain song to be played throughout the holiday season year after year. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. Hard to believe, but this is the only villain song to have ever been played for so long. There may have been a few other holiday specials where the villains have their own songs to sing, but the Grinch is one of the most memorable villains from the works of Dr. Seuss and eventually the Christmas season. Next to Ebenezer Scrooge, of course. And what helped cement his villainous history was the infamous song from the TV special, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile. With Dr. Seuss writing the lyrics and Thurl Ravenscroft, a.k.a. Tony the Tiger, singing, it became a match made in heaven and can still be heard throughout radio stations all over the world. But in regards to the song and the special itself, 
There was an interesting edit to the broadcast, particularly on CBS, that would occur from the 1970s to 1985. One of the edits was the removal of the Yorra Rotter verse. You're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. You're the king of sin. A few other cuts occurred, but it's hard to tell whether these bits were cut for time or for some other reason. But in 1986, they kept the special uncut, but compressed it for a time, so we can still listen to the song entirely today. And in regards to Jim Carrey's version from the live-action remake, it was decent. Not as good as the original version, but I consider it an honorable mention. And to Carrey's credit, he sang the song in a few verses without any accompaniment or any sort of alteration to his voice. So he certainly had a lot to work with in the film. But no one can top Ravenscroft's rendition of the Grinch song. It is still a classic to this day and all to describe the wretch that tried to steal Christmas. Ever had that one song that some people can't stand yet others enjoy? Well, this is certainly one of them. Grandma got run over by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve Hard to believe a song about an old woman getting run over by Santa's reindeer would be a holiday classic. But it did and still is to this day. The same could not be said for the spin-off TV special, but that's a different story. But as far as humorous Christmas songs go, it's not that bad. The concept is strange in and of itself, but I think that's what makes it humorous. Like how a reindeer would run over an old lady who hadn't taken any medication and drank a little too much eggnog. But then again, it would be more of a tragedy if she were to have an eggnog medication-induced coma, so... Sorry, I got a little sidetracked with my dark side of reality there. Back to the song. The interesting thing about this song is its origin. In the late 70s, Elmo Shropshire, who was working part-time as a veterinarian, would meet with Randy Brooks to make this song. The idea for this song was based on Brooks' own grandmother, who had the tendency to drink heavily. The idea of Grandma getting hit by a reindeer while intoxicated during the holiday season would make it to a song, but more as a joke than a real song itself. But the moment it was aired on the radio, the rest was history. You can say there's no such thing as Santa. Of course, this song is not without some backlash and controversy, as people say it was harsh and ageist. Really? Is that a word? Is that a thing? Whatever the name, people weren't happy and didn't want it on the air. But really? Is it that horrible? It's not like the song says how much of an idiot grandma I was, or how the family didn't bother having a funeral. Granted, they didn't bother opening up her gifts, but they still respected her. This world is getting a little too sensitive about certain things, so I felt like this song deserves a spot on the list because we all just want to let loose and have fun. It's not meant to be taken seriously, so why argue about it? Some people might have different tastes, but as long as people are listening, then there's no shame or any issues with that. Merry Christmas. Loneliness and the holidays aren't much of a good combination. Makes you feel like you're having a blue Christmas. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. Now, as much as I like this version, it's not going on the list. I'll consider it an honorable mention, though. However, there's only one good rendition that goes on the list, and that would be the one from The Year Without a Santa Claus. While I do enjoy Elvis's rendition as a whole, as it takes on the aspect of, say, a lover missing another, but I find this rendition more interesting to listen to from this classic Rankin Bass special. For those who haven't seen it, Santa Claus is feeling sick and depressed that people don't care about what he does anymore. So after Mrs. Claus and some elves try to prove him wrong and pull a few strings, everyone in the world gives Santa a well-deserved day off, while also giving gifts to him. During this, Santa receives a letter from a little girl who feels that Christmas won't be the same without him, since she feels that he makes Christmas special. Although a certain religious wacko and former sitcom star may feel otherwise, but let's face it, he has his head up his ass. 
What's interesting about this song is how you can actually feel sad for her. You feel her sympathy for how Santa brings joy to everyone, but with him taking a day off, it wouldn't be the same. The song brings Santa to tears, especially when he later receives gifts from the children all over the world, showing that there are people who care about him and Christmas itself. What's also interesting about this segment is that it has only been spoofed once. In a brief segment from the South Park episode, The Wacky Molestation Adventure, where Kyle tries to convince Fidel Castro to bring democracy to Cuba. Now, of course, Rankin Bass has been made fun of by basically everyone, but we have rarely seen bits based on this segment alone. And as for the song itself, if you prefer the version by Elvis or any similar cover of it, then that's fine. But if you want a real emotional rendition of the song, then I think you'll like this version too. Now when it comes to Christmas songs, there's always the classic 12 Days of Christmas, but there have been numerous renditions and parodies of it throughout the years. But if I had to choose one, I would have to go with the rendition by Ray Conniff and Singers. On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in the pear tree. What I like about this rendition is how it's traditional, but as it progresses, it has a bit of fun playing the music. Even when it goes to the Eleven Pipers piping bit, it takes on a different type of instrument for pipes. Now I know there are other renditions that are done in the traditional way, like John Denver and the Muppets, but I like this rendition more due to the change in the choir from both the men and the women, each singing with a great sense of melody. And it's certainly a good choice for the holiday season. Of course, this song had to make the list. And why not? It's a classic since its release in 1989, released along with the film of the same name. Though if you listen to the song by itself and not from the opening credits, it's actually more interesting to listen to and makes you feel like you want to take a vacation during the Christmas season. You could be in a nice cabin in the woods, a beach in the Bahamas, or Cayman Islands, or even in theme parks like Walt Disney World. Just wait and see this Christmas vacation. The song was written by Barry Mann and Cynthia Whale, who had also worked on other songs later on, including Somewhere Out There from An American Tale, Absolutely Green from A Troll in Central Park, and Whatever You Imagine from The Page Master. They've even written songs for people like Johnny Crawford, Conway Twitty, The Drifters, Hanson, Jane the Americans, and many more. The song itself was sung by Mavis Staples, who was once a member of the family band The Staples Singers. Between the two writers and the one singer, they both made a wonderful and timeless song to listen to during the holiday season. But did it really need that massy singing near the end? It's like Minnie Mouse is a Freddy Fazbear animatronic. Despite that issue, the song is a lot of fun to listen to on Christmas, whether or not you have your own Christmas vacation plan. Just keep that mouse voice away from me. Seriously. Well, folks, we're down to the final five on the list. Let's take a quick commercial break before we move on to the rest. And we'll also look on some holly jolly honorable mentions to see which came close to making the list. Ow! So you think Santa will like these red and green M&Ms? I don't know. I never met the guy. <laughs> he does exist! They do exist. Oh. Uh, Santa?
Welcome back, folks. We're about to take a look at the last five songs on the list. But first, let's look on the honorable mentions. Now, I doubt any of you have seen this outside of YouTube, since it was released during the 1950s in Chicago, Illinois, and Johnstown, Pennsylvania, then eventually in the Midwest in the 1980s via satellite. But now people are able to see it all over the internet and enjoy it during the holiday season. As far as the animation goes, it's pretty decent for stop motion. In fact, the people involved with this short will become involved with other holiday shorts, such as Susie Snowflake and Frosty the Snowman, not the Rankin-Bass version. Both have the same black and white quality, which gives a nice sense of nostalgia, and both rely on vocalization and no music. But we're mainly focusing on this short, and it's certainly a sweet short to watch for the sake of novelty, or even showing this to younger kids. What I like about this rendition is the vocals between the two choirs, each giving a good vibrant melody to their singing, especially to those who sing as the title character. And I like how the narration plays off without any music playing. Just a nice calm hum from the choir, giving it a good storytelling aspect to the short. There have been other renditions to this song, but some don't really capture the same quality that this rendition has. But there is one decent rendition I found recently on YouTube, sung by Harry Babbitt and the Heartbeats. Babbitt actually sings along with the song, with music to accompany him. His singing has a gentle melody to match the song itself, so it certainly fits. Old Santa will come in and set down his pack And Hard Rock will hold the reindeer till Santa comes back If you hear a giggle as he turns to go It's Coco, a Snowball, and Joe But these two renditions aren't as strong as the songs on the list itself But they're still enjoyable to listen to It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This song was actually close to making it on the list, but I didn't include it for one reason. When you hear it, you may hear it too soon. Considering how early people put up their Christmas decorations during the fall is ridiculous. And the moment Halloween is over, you start to hear Christmas music playing on certain radio stations. So if I were to put this song up, I feel like it would continue encouraging that idea to others throughout the years. But that's not to say the song is bad. It's actually fun to listen to when it's actually close to Christmas and not before Thanksgiving. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Soon the bells will start. Now the rendition you're hearing is by Perry Como and the Fontaine Sisters. And I like their rendition because it has a nice catchy and calm melody to it. A tad dated in some of the lyrics, but I don't mind it. If you're in the mood to get into the Christmas spirit, then this is the song for you. Just wait until after Thanksgiving. Seriously, we have to stop promoting Christmas so early. I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. I'm Mr. Heat Blister. I'm Mr. Hundred and One. You knew this was going to show up somewhere, but unfortunately it's in the honorable mentions. The reason is that their songs aren't exactly Christmas related. Yeah, they mention that they're white or green Christmas, but their songs aren't really Christmas oriented. They mainly describe who they are and what they do. It's basically in general, not specific with Christmas. Now that's not to say I don't like these songs. I actually love listening to these songs. They're very catchy and enjoyable. I never wanna know a day that's over 40 degrees I'd rather have it 80, 90, 100 degrees Now of course, with a song this popular, there are three other renditions. The one rendition from the Year Without a Santa Claus remake is half good, half bad. The good half comes from Michael McKean's portrayal as Snow Miser, as it is decent to say the least. Harvey Fierstein as Heat Miser is a different story. His performance is too hammy and very strange. And no, I'm not criticizing his voice because he at least tries to sing. Hell, he sang a few songs in Mulan and was pretty decent in that film. But I can't say he was the perfect heat miser. The spinoff special, A Miser Brothers Christmas, has a similar issue, but has a bad snow miser and a good heat miser. This is mainly due to the fact that they brought back George S. Irving as heat miser, and he still does a good job singing his respective song. 
The actor who plays Snow Miser was a pretty lousy choice. His voice is hammier, is that even a word, than Fierstein's Heat Miser. The only good rendition is done by Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, and yes, that is the band's name. They have two of their band members sing as each character, making it an interesting track, while also using the same type of music as the original. Friends call me Snow Miser. But as decent as that rendition is, it can't be the original rendition from the TV special. But neither of the songs made it on the list, so let's move on to the last honorable mention. Too much. <laughs> Too much. On the first day of Christmas, Payday gave to me this broke dick piece of shit dress. A fairly new song released in time for the holiday season, this song takes the style of the 12 Days of Christmas and turns it into a parody, making references towards the game Payday 2. Even if you haven't played the game, you can still get a good laugh out of the song, especially since all of the characters involved with the game sing the song in a comedic fashion parallel to how serious the game is. On the seventh day of Christmas, Payday came to me. Seven tasers buzzing. Six tasers charging. Five. And while the game makes references towards the frustrations that occur in the game itself, the only problem with the song is the use of the new character, Clover. If you don't know who she is, don't worry, nobody does. She was announced as a new playable character months ago, but has yet to be released on the game itself. Regardless, the song itself is still a lot of fun to listen to, and I definitely consider it a new holiday classic. Not as big as the songs I have on the list, but certainly worth listening. So now we've finished the honorable mentions, let's get back to the final five on the list. Now, A Christmas Vacation is nice, but I feel like this song best describes how to enjoy the holiday season. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Yep, no place like home to celebrate the holidays, that's for sure. What's interesting about this song is how it fits not only with Christmas, but also seems like a good song to listen to during Thanksgiving. Now, hear me out on this. This song isn't specific about what holiday to celebrate, but it feels like it means more than just Christmas. Even if it was meant to be just a Christmas song, I can't help but feel like people would enjoy this song during the holidays, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa too. Hell, I'll even recommend it for Festivus. Because if you listen to the lyrics, you will hear no sign of Christmas whatsoever, and it makes it more interesting to listen to during the holidays, from Thanksgiving even up to New Year's. And I think the version by Perry Como makes it more interesting to listen to. It gives a good sensation in you, saying, I'm going to see my family during the holidays, and I'm going to have a good time doing so. Some people may not see it, but I certainly do. And if you see it the same way I do, you'll definitely enjoy it even more than me. Now, we can't talk about Christmas without having to talk about the three people who basically made it become historical and literally biblical. The three wise men. They crowned the baby Jesus, the new king, and thus began his history. Because of their impact, they would get their own song of what gifts they brought. But the question is, which rendition is the best? In my opinion, I believe this rendition deserves the spot. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. What's interesting about this rendition is how it mixes between a serious note to a jazzy, upbeat tone. Between the serious tone of the Three Kings and the jazzy, upbeat tone of the Camels. 
They take it into a sort of music rivalry, but after a while they come together and sing together in perfect harmony. But what I find to be great about this rendition is how each king displays their gifts while singing, which can be visually entertaining thanks to the work of Will Vinton and company. Their animation goes along very well with this segment, as well as the other segments that follow afterward. Frankincense to author have I, incense on the deity I, prayer and praising all men raising, worship him God most high. To be honest, I was split between using this song and the Little Drummer Warner segment from Animaniacs, but since that segment featured multiple songs from Silent Night to The Little Drummer Boy, I felt like the kings themselves needed to be mentioned. Very rare do people mention the kings who gave props to Jesus, especially in his youth. But this rendition certainly deserves a lot more attention, especially since Will Vinton's work is always top notch. Hell, the special itself won an Emmy and certainly deserved it. But there are still more songs on the list to go over, so let's move on. Now, of course, being the holiday season, you can't forget about a certain red-nosed reindeer whose song became a big hit throughout the years. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. Now, everyone knows Gene Autry's rendition, as well as Burl Ives' rendition from the Rankin Bass special. And while those are good, I feel like there are two renditions that deserve more attention than those. Rudolph the red Now you're probably wondering why I put these two up on the list and not just one. Well, to be honest, I think these two deserve more attention than the traditional renditions or any new rendition by a boy band or a pop star. The first rendition by the Melodiers is a nice doo-wop version that is a little quick but fun to listen to. The second version by the California Raisins is an old-fashioned Motown style that has a nice slow melody and a soulful tone in the singing. But let's discuss how they differ entirely. The melody or style has a fast pace with a different melody to play the song out instead of the standard style we know. And it doesn't even begin with the list of the original reindeer as it goes straight into Rudolph himself. The lyrics and doo-wop brackets match the music as it plays on, which makes it rather interesting. The version by the California Raisins take a similar approach from what the Temptations did with their rendition keeping the opening lyrics and the traditional style of the melody, but they play it a little slower. However, unlike the Temptations rendition, there is more involvement of each singer of the Raisins, as they sing in each part very well, whether they sing individually or as a group. Each has a variety of pitch in their singing, from a bass to a counter tenor. Add in the fantastic stop motion animation of Will Vinton's crew, and you got a fantastic rendition of the titular reindeer. Hey, Rudolph! Some people might not like the idea of having two renditions share the spot on the list, but I feel like it should be an option to let people choose their favorite type of rendition or even make one of their own if they can. It helps to have numerous styles of songs like this so people can choose from one song to another. Whichever you choose is yours. As for me, I'll enjoy these two renditions every Christmas. Because no matter what you choose, you'll still remember the red-nosed reindeer, who certainly went down in history. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you go down in history. This song certainly gets me in the mood for Christmas for so many reasons that it's hard to jot them all down. But what I find interesting about this song is the year the song was released, 1989. Yes, the song is 25 years old, 
and even after the years pass, it never feels dated. The lyrics may seem like it, but it certainly has a timeless feel to it. Wish the feeling lasted. The song itself gives so much feeling to it that it's almost sincere as it plays on. It really gives you a good feeling for the Christmas season. I can almost relate to what the song addresses, as every time I listen to it, I get into the Christmas spirit. Every time I pass by houses covered with decorations, and even if there is a small amount or a large amount of snow, it makes me feel happy during this holiday season. Even if some people can be miserable about it, there is still some joy to it. When I first heard it on a CD as a young child, it made me feel very happy. And I still get into that spirit as I listen to it every Christmas. And I can certainly thank Johnny Maestro and the Brooklyn Bridge Singers for that, as they make the song worth listening to each and every Christmas. With the wonderful music and singing, this song certainly gives off its own Christmas serenade. A Christmas serenade. So, we come to the number one spot on the countdown. It took me a while to compile this list to find the best one to use. Hell, I started this list in 2013, but I haven't had the time to go over it. And when I came back to writing it, I made some changes to the list. But now, after all this time, I'm ready. So let's not waste any time and get down to it. Now I know what you're thinking. Out of all the songs made for Christmas, out of all the songs sung in this TV special alone, why would you only choose this one? Is this song even Christmas related? Why not another rendition? Why not another song? Why not the medley itself? Well the answer may surprise you. Much like Christmas Serenade, this song basically gives off the feeling of Christmas by the lyrics alone. We can certainly enjoy and appreciate this holiday if we can all do more than just decorate or have presents. We can share this holiday to people we know, our family and friends. We can give those who are unfortunate or in despair a chance to be happy again by giving all we can to them. Because this holiday season is more than just presents, trees and decorations. It's a time to bring peace and happiness to everyone. Even if you don't celebrate Christmas, you can certainly help share that happiness to others. Even if people celebrate Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, there is still the belief of bringing peace to everyone. And I feel like this song gives that kind of message to anyone who believes that. Now as for this particular rendition, let me at least make this clear. Yes, I know all about John Denver's rendition with the Muppets, and yes, that message can still be conveyed from this rendition as well. And as much as I like that rendition, I think this rendition from the Muppet Family Christmas deserves more attention. And that rendition is not just because of all the Muppets from Sesame Street to Fraggle Rock singing along, but because of who starts the song off, Robin, Kermit's nephew. He, along with the other Muppets, believe that the feeling is there too, even at a young age. But I feel as though this song deserves a bit more attention due to the fact that I wanted to make this song as a tribute to the puppeteer who played Robin, Jerry Nelson who passed away August 23rd in 2013. He was one of the many talented puppeteers who worked with Henson and his crew for decades. His voice as Robin helps bring so much emotion to the song that it almost gets me teary-eyed, especially with his passing. And with Jim Henson singing along with him, as well as every other character around, makes it more emotional to listen to. And it certainly wouldn't be fair without mentioning Jerry Parks, who also known as Duck, who had recently passed away in October. Each actor and puppeteer had given so much emotion and heart to this special, and to each song, and no song was more emotional than this, as it certainly tells us that the spirit of the holidays is in each and every one of us, and it certainly deserves the number one spot on the countdown. It's in every one of us. And that was my list of the top 13 Christmas songs. I'm sure some of you were expecting other songs, but I felt like these songs deserved more attention than others. Not to say all Christmas songs are bad, though. 
Each song out there can still be meaningful to others during this season. Even if one of your favorites didn't make it on the countdown, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. I made this list not just because of the songs, but to get people into the Christmas spirit. To enjoy every moment you share with your friends, your family, and everyone else you hold close to your heart. Even if you don't like some of these songs, you could still have fun with the season by just sharing that joy with others and help bring peace to everyone around you. We live through so much over the years that it helps to have a holiday that can help bring everyone together and bring so much joy and harmony. And that's all there is to it. <sighs> well, it's time for me to hit the sack. Before I go, I want to wish everyone the happiest of holidays and a very happy new year. Good night, folks. I wish you a hopeful Christmas. I wish you a brave new year. All anguish, pain, and sadness. Leave your heart and let your road be clear. They said there'd be snow at Christmas. They said there'd be peace on earth. Hallelujah, Noel, be it heaven or hell. This Christmas we get we deserve. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, as well as Channel Fratter and Cartoon Hangover. Also, visit me and Channel Fratter on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Just click on the annotations. And for more of my videos, visit me on Mr. Coat and Friends, which is thatfellowinthecoat.com. Booyah!